Hello everybody, it is Wednesday, January 20th and I'm doing this handheld. So, take a gravel. It's gonna get shaky. So yesterday, Jess was here to help me out on something and she left with the thingy that hooks up to my DSLR, that hooks up to my other tripod because my main tripod is hooked up on my, uh, you know, over there. So, uh, this camera, the thingy that hooks up to the tripod does not fit on the other tripod. Long story short, I'm doing this handheld, so it's going to be really quick. Uh, I don't have a lot of news to share with you other than uh, to say that my lighting fixture, fixture has some issues. It's not a lighting issue, it's a power issue. So I've had to call the electricians again. They're going to have to come back and investigate. That's going to cost me more money. What it does is, um, let's say I turn on the lights after like two or three hours, sometimes it's one, regardless of the time, it shuts off and turns itself back on. <laughs> Not good when you're filming. So uh, yeah, anyways, I'll deal with that when they come and whatever issue is, we're when we are the other gonna get it fixed. Uh, two things I have to share with you. I did a flip through of my watercolor journal because uh, a lot of you have been asking for it, so I just filmed that. And I've also filmed a little study of my black ballpoint pens that I use for doodling and sketching, like over sketching. Hang on, I gotta switch arm. Oh. Um, and so I filmed that and I've had a few surprises. So I will let you see that now. So here are the five pens, and I'm going to do a swatch on this. Um, this is a Fabriano notebook, just a regular paper. And I want to see if um, some of them bleed through, and I also want to see if some of them are permanent. I'm going to start with the Sarasa, the Zebra Sarasa. Oops, you get the gist. <laughs> 0 0.7. Next I have my beloved Pilot Permaball. This is a medium tip and this one was sent to me by Moira from the UK. So it is still available in Europe, I'm assuming, maybe not just in the UK. Uh, we can't find it here anymore in uh, North America. But uh, there is a replacement for it. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna swatch this after that. Uh, but this is the actual perma ball. So pilot perma ball, and this is the medium tip. So here are the replacements for the permaball in North America. They're called multi-ball and I have it both in the fine tip and the medium tip. So I think this is the fine tip. Yes. That would be awesome for doodling because it's very, very fine tip. This one is the medium tip. Again, oh, it's not the permaball. <laughs> it's the multi-ball. I gotta get used to the new name. Next we have the pilot multi-ball in medium. And the last one, which is the food ball, uh, the 1.5 food ball by Otho. It is super large. Not my favorite just because of the size of it. I prefer felt tips as opposed to roller balls. Anyways, okay, so Let's see if they bleed through. So it looks like the one that leaves a bigger impression is the zebra. It's not actually, well, yeah, the seven here has a little bit of bleed through. I'm going to first heat set that before I splash this with water. 
okay just to make sure that it is dry and I'm gonna spray all of them with water first see if there's any one of them that start wicking right off the bat oh my <laughs> Okay, so, so far the Sarasa has an immediate reaction. Let me just put something under here. Oops. Ah. Yeah. Major wicking from Sarasa. These ones don't seem to be affected by uh, spraying water. Let's see if they're going to react. If I brush some water, this is a water brush on them. Oh. Ah. Agreeably surprised. I thought definitely that the pilot permaballs and multiballs would actually react to water, but they look like they're permanent. Nice surprise. Oh, well. Yeah, I think uh, the discoloration that I'm getting here, I think, is just because the, the paper gets wet. Let me dry this. Mm, not completely dry. Oh, but I'm, I'm liking the fact that the multi-balls are definitely permanent. Wow. That is good news right there. I'm just wondering if, if the food bowl didn't bleed because um, it's there's more ink in what I wrote here and maybe it wasn't totally dry. Um, I kind of have a tendency to think that if it's heat set now, well, I kind of have a feeling that it is semi-permanent if there's such a thing. Permanent is supposed to be an absolute, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's an absolute, so. <laughs> okay, my last test that I wanna do is add gesso to all of these and see if anyone would react. Now, of course, this was set by water. Uh, that might have an influence as well, but I'm very curious about the Sarasa. I'm gonna put a little bit of gesso here. Whoops, too much. I can never control my gesso portions. <laughs> I'm gonna take a palette knife. Actually, I should take a brush. And grab a bit of gesso and... Yep. I think, because this has bled quite a bit, I think that once this is set with water, even the zebra is not going to uh, bleed so much. These definitely not. Uh, let's draw on this side here. No, nope, I have no ink on my paint, so... Nothing got muddied, none of the letters moved. Of course, this has been set with water. Uh, let's do a very quick test without the water. Let's use the multi-ball media. Actually, let's use the permaball. I've never really tested the permaball with another medium on top. <laughs> now I'm writing multi-ball, which is funny. <laughs> permaball. Okay. Let's dry this. I'm assuming this is dry enough. Not sure that my gesso is still liquid. Let's try this. Oh ho! Surprise, surprise! No bleeding. Well, this girl is happy. So, I've always said that when you doodle and you use the multi ball or the perma ball, wait until the end because it's not permanent. Guess what? It is. Maybe that's why they call it permaball. <laughs> and of course it looks like the multi-ball will not be a problem as well. So yay! Isn't that cool? I mean seriously, I really thought that the permaball and the multi-balls were not permanent. 
But now I don't have to wait until the end. If I want to use them right away, I can. And I know that it's not going to interfere with the rest of my work. I guess providing that they're really dry. So I'm assuming if you're, oh, you know what though? If you use this on like over paint, maybe it's different because the paper will absorb the ink and that probably helps with the permanent uh, characteristics of the ink. So I have not uh, swatched this over paint or gesso. Next time I'll do that. So my journal is a watercolor Strathmore journal and it is the series 400 which I can't find anywhere anymore. <laughs> I've looked at all the local stores that I had here and unfortunately I can't find it. I like it because I like I don't like spiral spiral <laughs> I don't like spiral bound books. I like them like this and so that's why I'm having a hard time finding another journal. And I also like the texture of the page. Okay, so the first page is a doodle and I did that after I took Kathy Bluto's class. This uh, dates back from March 14, uh, March 2014. So this is when I started the book. And this is done in water-based markers. The next page is another doodle. Uh, most of these pages I've already put up on the internet, but uh, some of you might have seen them already, but that was a video. So another doodle. This one was, um, I remember the video title I think was How to Cheat at Doodling with Stamps. And so I took uh, Stamps by Ellen Vargo and that was already in there in the background. I kind of used it to test out, I think, something. I can't remember what it is. I think there are distress stains in the background. And then I stamped and I overpainted. This I was very proud of. Um, <laughs> I was using letter stickers for the first time to mask. These, I don't think I've ever um, showed on the video. I don't think so. This was a class that I took when Joanne Sharp came uh, to Scrapbook Central and it was kind of like a foldable book and I never finished it so I added colors and I finished the whole thing and I decided to cut them up and add them to a background that was, was already existing. It was kind of ugh. So I just stuck on uh, these on there. I also doodle. I added some doodles around the shapes and whatnot. This was the piece that inspired my watercolor fun with Elegant Writer class. That was the very first drawing that I did with the Elegant Writer. And it's also using Neo Colors as well. I actually love that drawing. Here's another piece with the Elegant Writer. And I just recently added the quote, may every sunrise hold more promise and every sunset hold more peace. And of course there's Neo Colors and um, the Elegant Writer. Oh, <laughs> that was another attempt at reproducing the doodle that you've seen at the beginning for my watercolor class as well. Somehow, somewhere it got super dark and I just got fed up of drawing the same thing so I just kind of let it go, but that's the final result. This I love. I think this is one of my favorite pieces. Uh, my flowers with a lot of doodled lines, very fine lines, done with a marker. And just a simple watercolor background. I really like that. Here's a test for the bonus class that um, I added at the end of my online class. Again with the Elegant Writer. Another uh, piece that I just used a cleanup background and I stamped over that and I doodled around it and I added a quote. I actually added the quote from my printer. I printed on this kind of paper, kind of like a decorative uh, ledger paper. This page you've seen very recently, I just did that in December. That is my uh, my doodle with masking. Very busy, 
Very busy background. <laughs> This is again another uh, first run of the final project that I did for the watercolor fun with elegant writer class. Here's a lady, <laughs> a face that I did again with the elegant writer and I added some gold in the background. Very simple. This is just straight up elegant writer and gold. That's it. There's no other color on there. But you can see the turquoise and the pink around the eyes and here. I love that marker. I keep forgetting to use it again, but I will eventually. This was something that I did in November. I think it was part of the Nano Jomo challenge. I was trying to use, again, letter stickers as masks. It did not work well. I had to go over with some paints, but I like the way it looks. It turned out okay. <laughs> These are my flowers. They're fruits that grow like flowers. Uh, yeah, again with the Elegant Writer, very simple. So I've got cherry trees, lemon trees, and orange trees. And I know the seeds are not usually black, but they are in my book. <laughs> again, another piece for the class. Again, this is my first, um, my very first project for this class. Or not my, the first version of the class project. <laughs> That was, oh, something that had totally gone wrong. I think I videoed about this, I'm not sure, but anyways, it was a, generally speaking, it was a, it was a mess. It was a total mess and I managed to salvage it by making, again, a palm tree made of grapes. And the quote says, be original. How fitting. <laughs> uh, this was a piece that I did for Christmas. And this here on the right, I don't think I've ever shown that. I was working on a piece for the store uh, last year, or at the beginning of, yeah, at the beginning of last year. It was just to test out some neon colors or fluorescent colors. I just actually finished it very recently, I think a couple of weeks ago. I added, I added, I added some doodling in the circles with gel pens. And the face is very neon. It's uh, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent green and blue. But it, the face, the whole thing is a stamp. It's it's not my design. It's not my uh, my drawing. This one also you've seen, although I don't think I did a tutorial on this uh, or a video. But this was a sketch from the wonderful Heather from the Craft Shack. And she had this part here, not, it, it wasn't an eye, it was kind of, it was this way actually. But like omit the, the circle and the eye, so that was the sketch that she provided. For some reason I saw an eye in there, like an inverted eye, so I did a face with it. Very whimsical, very carnival-ish, I guess, or carnival-esque. And I added a quote. And lots of colors in the background, a little bit of doodling in white around the face. I quite like it. I like this one too. This was also part of Nano Jomo, um, and I also added a quote afterwards. And these two people, you've seen this. I've vlogged about this too. That was, um, I don't know, just a random design. Oh, that was part of Nano Jomo as well. Yes, Nano Jomo on November 23rd. And this is what I made uh, during the New Year's Eve party on uh, the, at the Craft Shack. And um, I kind of finished it last week, so you've seen this recently, so I showed that. And that's it. That is my watercolor journal. So you wanted to see it? There you have it. Okay, I gotta go because my arm is like totally, totally done. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And like this video if, um, or give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see, see you later. Bye! Oh, we can pump this up though. Pump? Oh! Oh!